it was one day no one cared what I did. No one cared what I wore, what I looked like, what I said. And then all of a sudden that was all anyone would talk about. I think back to some of the things that I said in interviews. Yeah, hate comments don't bother me. And I was like, you went home and cried all night because of it. While filming season three, our entire family was going through a lot. It's hard to watch back those episodes. I say I don't know to everything, but the thing is, I don't know who I am. Before we jump into this episode, I'd like to invite you to join this community to hear more interviews that will help you become happier, healthier, and more healed. All I want you to do is click on the subscribe button. I love your support. It's incredible to see all your comments, and we're just getting started. I can't wait to go on this journey with you. Thank you so much for subscribing. It means the world to me. The best-selling author and host. The number one health and wellness podcast. On Purpose with Jay Shetty. I want to say this to you because I don't think I've ever talked about this with you, but you come up in more conversations or when I'm doing keynotes on stages. And it's really funny because I kind of think of you randomly and often. I want to share this with you. I've never said this to you. And it comes up because I have watched your journey from afar, as everyone has, for such a long time. And I've really deeply admired just how phenomenally skilled you are at what you do. I think you're a phenomenal dancer, you're an incredible performer. Thank you. And if I'm ever presenting or talking to anyone about social media or digital or whatever it is, I always bring your name up because I think you're one of those people that obviously got your moment on TikTok when it took off and everything, but I feel like there were just years and years of practice and hard work that went behind it that we don't always see. And I just, I just wanted to share that with you as we kick off today, that I think it's incredible. And I think you've been practicing for this life that you live since you were like four years old. And so I, I always try and highlight that. And so I don't know, I, I think of you in that context often, so. No, thank you. I mean, I appreciate that. I think when it comes to social media, it's very easy to get on yourself and say it was just luck. But to hear that from someone like you is definitely, you know, puts it into a different perspective that I don't always let myself feel, which is really nice. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. Do you still kind of kid yourself and just say it's luck to yourself now after all these years? Do you still feel that way? I do. And I think that, you know, having that in the back of my mind definitely keeps me a little bit more humble and helps me, you know, this wasn't something that I was asking for, or looking for, but I mean, I've all like my entire life, I've been filming videos, whether it's like I was 10 and look at how I do this or this, is how I do my makeup, like always just making videos. That was always something I loved and I never shared them with anyone until TikTok. So it's really, it's crazy to think back about those times and how they probably really did help me get to where I am now. I love what you said that luck or viewing your success as luck helps you stay humble. I think that's such a beautiful trait and quality to aspire for and to always practice. At the same time though, I'm guessing that when you see it through the lens of luck, sometimes it can affect your self-esteem or self-worth because you're like, oh, I just got lucky and maybe I don't deserve this. I don't know yeah. if those thoughts come up at the same time as trying to stay humble. There's this side of like low self-esteem that we all go through. I mean, absolutely. I think it's hard not to feel that way, especially a lot of my journey was everyone telling me that I didn't deserve it, kind of feeding into that and it's starting to really affect you know, how I think about myself. Do I deserve anything? Why am I where I am? I don't do anything special. I'm not different than anyone. There's millions of people that would probably be better at my job than I am, but somehow it's me. And, you know, I kind of try and separate myself online from who I am in person. I always like to say it's Charlie D'Amelio, who everyone else sees, and Charlie, who I am, when it's just me. And, you know, you really have to appreciate the things that you work hard for because I feel like those are the moments where I really do feel proud of myself because I don't always, even when achieving these amazing things, I'm like, well, it's not really me. It's the people that are watching me that got me here, you know, like they could have done this to anyone. But when it comes to things like dancing with the stars or hosting the Kids' Choice Awards. Like those were two 
of probably my favorite accomplishments of mine because I really felt like I had to work for that. And it was just moments where I I really truly felt proud of myself and I don't feel like that very often. Mm. I'm so glad that you shared that with us because yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's like the reason why you did so well on both of those is because you've done it for years and years and years. Yeah. But sometimes you need to have a moment where you're working really hard on one specific thing so that you can see it. How long did it take you to make this awareness of like, there's Charlie D'Amelio and then there's Charlie. Like how long did it take you to figure that out for yourself and to even explain it in that way? Yeah, it definitely took me a while. I always knew in the back of my mind, I was like, I would do certain brand deals or ads and they'd have this creative and I do it. And I put on this like super happy, smiley, like obviously catering to a younger audience, which I love doing, but that's not who I am at heart. And I think growing up and I started this when I was what, 15 years old. And then I was turning 17 and 18 and I was, you know, getting tattoos and I would curse and everyone would be like, whoa, this is crazy. And I was like, this is what I do in my normal day-to-day life. Like this is who I am. So I really just had to, the version that people don't like isn't even me. You know, it's what they nitpick out of certain things that I do. And I think coming to that realization, honestly, over the past few months, maybe this past year, I think has been probably one of the most helpful things to not let what other people say get to me. I empathize and feel so compassionate for how difficult that could be to be that young and have millions and millions and millions of people having an opinion on everything from what you wear to what you say to what you do and who you date and just everything, right? Like I can't imagine being your age and being put under a magnifying glass, like in the way you have, which I think is also very unique because I think TikTok put people under a magnifying glass in a way that it also never been done before. It's like a first time thing. So what has changed about then 15 and you're only 18 now, so it's only been three years, right? 19. 19 now. You're 19 now. So it's been four years. Yeah. In those four years, what has, what would you say is the biggest change that you've seen in who you thought you were then and who you are now? I think I just, you know, I was in high school. Uh, It was one day, no one cared what I did. No one cared what I wore, what I looked like, what I said. And then all of a sudden that was all anyone would talk about. It it happened so fast. And I put up a, a shield to kind of protect myself, which helped me, but also hurt me a little bit because it was hard to get out of that shell. And I mean, I think back to some of the things that I said in interviews, like, three years ago. Yeah. Hate comments don't bother me. And I was like, you went home and cried all night because of it. Like I would say things to make people think one thing, but inside I was very sheltered. And I went through a, a pretty big stage for maybe like the first two years where I always looked out for the best in people. And I got myself hurt a lot. You know, people wanted to make videos together and and they would invite me over for collabs and then they would all hang out and I wouldn't be invited and I would I would be so confused and the excuse was always you're too young or you know whatever and I was like you guys are just hanging out at a house like how am I too young for that but not too young to have in all your videos and it took a lot of you know distancing myself a lot of talking to my family, going to therapy, you know, figuring out who I am outside of anyone watching to be a little bit more content with myself and understand that I don't need to have all of these people like me. You know, I'm fine on my own. I love being by myself. I'm fine with the friends that I have in my corner that I've had for years or the new friends that come into my life that actually love me for me. And you know, there's nothing that I can do. I feel like now I'm kind of at a point where, you know, whatever, like that's kind of my motto. I always am just like, 
all right, okay, I don't, I don't know, I don't care. And focusing more on the things that really matter to me. Like it sounds so lame because I constantly talk about my dogs like they're my children, <laughs> but literally like spending the day with them, taking care of them, my responsibility being them and not myself. I don't have to worry about work or anything. They don't care if I have a million followers or none. Like, I don't know, just focusing more on the things that actually matter. The fans that actually love me no matter what, like have been there for years or are brand new and actually like who I am and not just what I put out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's so hard because so much of what you put out is you mm -hmm. or is a part of you. Yeah. And it can feel like the biggest part of you because it gets the biggest response. Yeah. And it's it's almost confusing in your brain to be like, when you're with your dogs, mm -hmm. it's a small part of your life or there's a small amount of people there, but it's actually a bigger, yeah. of a bigger importance or bigger yeah. significance to you. Because I have so much life that no one sees. I have so much about me that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. And I'm fine with that, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't feel... Like I need to change myself for anyone because I have I did that for so long and it was so exhausting and I worked so much while being so burnt out and just wanting to kind of get away from everyone Yeah. that now what I want to do is definitely a lot more important than what everyone's telling me to do. Mm, and that's, and that's really tough. Like when I've spoken to even like young mus musicians and, and music stars, it's like most people get their break when they're like 15 years old or something like that. And naturally everyone's older than you. And as a 15 year old, you're used to having parents or people older than you telling you what to do. And so whether it's your manager or whether it's your agent or your team or whatever it is, they book you and then you're doing what they say because you're doing what the adults say. It's kind of normal. And now that you're an adult yourself, you're kind of like trying to take that back what was it that you felt you did that wasn't you or that you felt you were doing because the adults are saying to do it? Or what were those things that you felt like you moved away from who you wanted to be or who you were? I think I, you know, for quite some time tried to just do whatever anyone said to make them like me, whether it was how I dressed or how I talked or what I said anything, what type of videos I make. I was listening to every comment, whether it was like, I hate that hoodie. Well, I'm never wearing that again. Like this person doesn't like it and dictating every decision I made through what other people said. And I mean, for a long time, the beginning, um, I was only surrounded by a bunch of adults and 25 year olds and all of this stuff. And they would always say how mature I am, but I was just trying to fit in. You know, I was still in high school, still like, you know, you want to be with the cool kids. So the people that I thought was cool, I would do anything to be like them, you know, dress different every day or, or speak about specific things or try to sound cool or change myself. And it's just so not worth it. Cause why, why am I going to do that? And how long am I going to do that until they realize that it's like, okay, we get it. Like you like whatever we like, you don't have to do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, I think it's it's so unfair to yourself to have to do that all the time. Mm. I love that. I love that you use that word unfair. Yeah. It's almost like it's just unfair to do that to yourself. That that really hit me and resonated with me because it's it's almost like you're just doing yourself such a big disservice by molding yourself into what yeah. you think someone wants. And that was just a thought they had on one day, mm -hmm. in one second, in one comment. And then, and then you have no idea who you are. I, I had to sit with myself and say, I have no idea what I like. I have no idea how I want to dress. I have no idea how I want to do my makeup or what's my favorite song or what's my favorite movie. I just, I don't know. Like, I do not know anything about myself. And my answer to every question was, I don't know. And I actually had to talk to my therapist about this. And I was like, I say, I don't know to everything, but the thing is, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know who I am. I feel like all I know is what anyone tells me to do. And 
I mean, it's it's a really weird feeling because how do you get out of that? How do you find out what you like? But you really just have to try things, get out of your house. I was not leaving my house ever. Like I would go through these phases where I don't want anyone to talk to me. I don't want to do anything. I just want to stay in my room all day, watch TV, like not get ready, nothing. And I've been really low a couple times. And I think this past time that I got really low was when I was like, okay, my parents even said they were like, we're not going to let you, we're not going to sit here and watch you rot in bed all day and not do anything. And just like, we can't do that. That's so unfair. And especially when you don't live with your parents and they're noticing that, it's an issue. Yeah. So I had to kind of really dig deep and ask the questions that I didn't ask for so long for whatever reason. Maybe I didn't want to know the answer. Or it was too much or scary to figure it out and be your own person. But I think it's just so much easier. Mm -hmm. And I and I think it's also just, you know, being, it's really hard when you're living your own journey and then you realize as you're getting older and as you are maturing, as as everyone does, you're looking back going, I can't really expect my 15 year old self to know all this anyway. Like, I think, you know, for me, when I think about being back to 15 and I didn't know anything about myself and I wasn't dealing with the pressures you dealt with or the challenges that you had. And sure, I had different challenges and different stresses as I'm sure everyone does has their own thing. But the point is that as a 15 year old self, you don't really know what you like anyway, because it is true. You are trying to be with the cool kids or you are trying to be like the other people. and you're getting involved in all sorts of things just for people to give you approval and validate you. And then all of a sudden, it's amazing that you're now coming to that point where you're like, I want to know. And I think what I love about what you said is, and it's because I said this often in my books and my work is that knowing what movies you like, what foods you like, what songs you like, that is the beginning of self-awareness. Like it's that basic. It's, it's not this complicated deep thing that it begins with. It really starts with those things. It starts with these really simple everyday choices that we all have to make. So I want to ask you simple everyday choices. What is it now that Charlie likes? Like, what is it that Charlie has discovered that mm. not Charlie D'Amelio, but Charlie <laughs> enjoys and appreciates? Like, what are the joys of life that your dogs obviously you mentioned? Yeah. But what are some of the things that brings you joy that you feel you're discovering for the first time? Things that bring me joy. I love cleaning. That's something that sounds so lame, but is so therapeutic. I love, um, what about cleaning? Cause ooh. <laughs> I want to know, I want to know now the way you said that yeah. with so much genuineness. I'm like, all right, <laughs> what about cleaning? Honestly, to me, it's just therapeutic. Like put something on my TV, clean my room, organize my stuff, make it how I like it, you know, mm -hmm. because there can be certain things that oh, well, you know, this is cool. I guess I like this, but what picture do I want out? Mm -hmm. What am I proud of and want presented? How do I like my bed made? How do I like my chargers to be set up? It's like such minuscule things that I think makes such a difference. And it also makes you feel productive and makes me feel like I have my stuff together. And I mean, as someone who struggles with obsessive compulsive disorder. That's one of my like big things where I feel like when I'm doing that, I'm almost clearing my head. So I don't know. It's just something that I genuinely enjoy doing. Yeah. And I think is super fun. Like this morning, because I've had such bad jet lag. I was like, okay, I can either try to go to sleep for the next three hours or get up and clean the kitchen and play with the dogs. And I was like, all right, let's just get up and do it. You know, I'll get up in five minutes and we'll start to do this stuff. You order your coffee and do all the things that you need to do to feel together. And that made me happy. And I was really proud I did that. And I started my day on a great note and now I feel great. So it's just like little things that I just, I find so much fun in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, the team will attest to this too. I'm like addicted to organizing shelves and bookshelves. So mm -hmm. I, I'll take you to the house afterwards and I have like I have this bookshelf in there that I personally curated and like <laughs> everything. And like, even if my wife moves one book, I'll notice it yeah. and I'll be like, where's that book going? But it's like, I get that, like organizing spaces and 
creating spaces to be spaces you want to live in mm -hmm. and sit in. Like even this room right now, like I curated it because I want to be in this space and I want it to feel comfortable for my guests and for myself. And I want it to also spark curiosity or whatever it may be. And I think it's interesting how all these tiny things, when you're intentional about them, they can spark so much joy without trying yeah. that hard. And I mean, it might be a little bit of like, the very few parts of my life that I genuinely get to control, you know, it's not up to anyone else. It's not, you know, do it this way or wear this or show this product. It's like, I just get to do this and make it how I want, the way I want it on my own schedule. And I'm fully in control of this task, start to finish, mm. which, you know, yeah, it's, a way to deal with being a little bit of a control freak. Yeah. <laughs> no, and you're right. I think that's such a great point. It's rare that we have that much certainty mm -hmm. and control over anything in life. And if we don't do it at home, we're going to potentially try and do it everywhere else where mm -hmm. we can't. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that's a great point. What else would you say that you've discovered about your likes and dislikes? It's like, what was something that you thought you liked before or someone had told you to like before and now you're like, uh, I actually change now. Like, that's not how I feel about it. Oh, um, there's definitely a few. I'd say one thing that I started to specifically like my own way was music. Mm -hmm. I, you know, would listen to whatever's popular. And I feel like now I really only listen to the songs that I genuinely enjoy listening to or I relate to. And even if it's the most random playlist ever where it's like rap, sad music, country music, like all in one. I enjoy listening to that and I don't have to listen to whatever everyone else is listening to. And I also can if I want to. If I want to listen to whatever's the top 100, I'm going to do that, you know, even in front of other people. Like I can play what I like and I'll take suggestions and not just what's your favorite song? Well, whatever one's the top one right now. Like, you know, having that to myself is also something really nice. Mm. Have you discovered any new artists or anyone recently Ooh. that you're like someone that maybe we haven't heard of or someone that maybe is less heard of that you're like? Well, my favorite artist, his name is Pim Stones. He doesn't make music anymore, which is really, really sad, but he's my favorite artist ever. He's made like some of the most incredible songs I've ever heard. And they're just so beautiful to listen to. And one of them has been my favorite song for a while. Actually, someone at my dance studio when I was like probably 13 had a solo to it. Wow! And ever since then, I've been obsessed. And he only has like two songs out on Spotify, but I will listen to the two of them just on repeat forever and ever and ever because they're so good. Wow. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I love it. I'll check it out. <laughs> Only two songs on Spotify. Yeah. So, Tim Stones. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to go check it out after this interview. No, I love that. And it, I think it's really refreshing and it must feel so good. I can see it in your face. So you just seem so like genuinely happy talking about the things that spark joy, that bring you that sense of comfort and ease and make life that much more. What if someone right now is listening and they're like, Charlie, I'm struggling with what, what you just said. Like, I find it hard to be open and honest about the things I like because people make fun of me or mm -hmm. ridicule me or maybe people tell me that's not cool or whatever it is. Like what has slowly given you the confidence to get there and what, what do you think people need to hear to almost feel confident in themselves to say that? I think it just starts with giving yourself permission to be open with yourself because it really like as much as it, sucks to hear like it is all in your head you have to work on your self-talk and I think positive self-talk is something that is so often overlooked because everyone's so overly critical of themselves you see your face you know in the reflection of your phone you're in pictures background of photos you're like oh I hate this one but this one posted it and I can't do anything about it you know you have to once you start speaking in a more positive tone about yourself and the people around you, the easier it is to feel more positive, you know, instead of, oh, I hate the way I look today. Well, you know what? My hair is doing something different and I kind of like it, you know, <laughs> starting yeah. with those little, little things that sound so, so like, it's so tiny. Who, who even cares? You know, it's in my head. It's not affecting anyone, but it's affecting yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think just the more you can be positive and open with yourself and 
not so overly critical of yourself. Mm -hmm. If you like a movie and no one else likes that movie, it doesn't mean it's a bad movie and you, you can't like it. You can still enjoy watching it. And okay, we just have different opinions. That's normal. And they probably like like stuff I don't like, but that doesn't take away from what they like. It's just, you know, the way you talk to yourself is so important. Yeah, you're so right. And it's it's so subtle. Like those thoughts, as you just said, like I love that switch that you just made between I don't like how my hair looks today or, oh, my hair's doing something different today and that's interesting or it looks cool, whatever it may be. There's an amazing book uh, for those who, who are more interested in what Charlie's talking about right now. It's called Psycho-Cybernetics. And it's this whole idea of how our thoughts completely define our reality. Yeah. And how, as you just said, studies show that we have 60 to 80,000 thoughts per day and 80% of them are negative and repetitive. So we're often having the same thought, which is like, I don't like how I look or I don't like how my hair looks or I don't like this about me or whatever yeah. it may be. And you keep having that thought. Oh yeah. And then it just spirals and then that's all you feel about yourself and then it becomes your reality. So that book really helped me. It's a, it's an old school classic in this space, but it convinces you that you can change your thoughts and it's not like you're lying to yourself, right? Like I, I want to address this for people who think that positive, this is not about positive thinking. This is not like looking at yourself and going, I'm amazing and I'm special. And like that stuff doesn't work either, yeah. but it's almost just tweaking your thoughts slightly to being, how do you change from being critical to just being curious? And that little switch can change everything. Exactly. And it, I think it's so important because getting to the point where you have a more positive self-talk, it's it's not linear. You know, you're going to have dips and and bad days and good days and bad months and good months. You just, that's, that's how it works. But I notice when I start to see myself slip and realize I've been super critical of myself and you know what, I've had such a bad week. That's probably why I'm feeling so insecure and maybe I'm taking it out on other people or I'm, I don't want to leave my house because I've critiqued everything about the way I look and not focus on one positive thing at all. You know, it really, that's when I noticed when I started to dip again, how important it is to really focus on being kind to yourself. Mm, yeah. And I, and I, I, I hope people really hear that because I think the reason why we're hard on others is because we're so hard on ourselves. And the reason we're so hard on ourselves is because we're so hard on others. And it's almost like if we were just able to be kinder to the stranger, our friend, our yeah. family member, then I think we'd actually be able to be more kind to ourselves 100%. and vice versa as well. Even like in friendships and relationships, I think it's important I, if you're telling jokes back and forth to each other. And maybe they're like, you know how you joke with your friends. Like sometimes it can be a little mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, you know, I've done the, why don't we try and just be really, really nice to each other for a little bit. Let's really focus on bringing each other up. And I've actually had that conversation before. And I think it's something that sounds almost corny, <laughs> like let's be super nice to each other, but it really is helpful to have the people that you love. And maybe you say it when you're a little bit down. So, you know, you're not asking for compliments. You're just asking for a more positive environment around you. And I think that there's something so special about that. And yeah. the people around you that love you will definitely be open to it, you know? And I think that there's also something in that the people that you have around you every day, you need to try and build up with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, I get, I get that people find that hard because I'm also in England, we banter a lot. And mm -hmm. so I banter a lot yeah. with my team, with my wife. Like if, if people see me and my wife together, they're like, they're like, you guys hate each Literally. other. Right? Like, <laughs> because we'd go so hard. And even my friends, I just came back from London for my sister's wedding and I was there with all my boys and I was so, we're so intense with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's how close we are, like yeah. the more intense we can be. But you're right that sometimes, and it's really interesting because when you get into a one-on-one -on -one with a friend, they'll say how much they need the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like when you're with a group of people and you're all bantering, yeah. it's great. But then when you're one-on-one -on -one with someone, you hear how someone's like, you know, I need a bit of encouragement, or right? yeah. I, need, I need to know that you think I'm doing good at this or whatever it may be. So, And also like, don't be afraid to be the person that 
is going to text all the people around you every time you see them do something I'm so proud of you like you looked amazing at this or this was so cool that you did this like be that person be the annoying person (laughs) you know I wish I did it more and I should and that's something that I'll take into the rest of the day Um, but this morning even I, I had a conversation with my mom and she's got back into modeling she's in Louisiana right now. So I haven't seen her in a couple of days and she was sending me photos and I didn't answer my phone for a little bit just because I've been jet lagged and crazy. And I was like, geez, like if I sent her something, I would want to hear back how proud she is of me. So let me just go over the top because sometimes you need to be that person, mm-hmm. especially if that's the energy that you're trying to get back. You can't get that without giving it too. Mm. Yeah, well said. And how's that been? Because obviously that's a big part of it, right? Especially with the new new docuseries as well, like the new season, like this idea of your whole family's now in the spotlight. Yeah. And it's almost like people just lump everyone together, especially when it's a, a big family and everyone's got exciting things happening. And, you know, I've obviously, obviously interviewed your whole family before. So I've I've sat with them and it's, it's wonderful. And at the same time, it's hard to find your own space and carve your own identity, right? Like that's challenging. Yeah. I think that the family dynamic is something that is really, really confusing, especially for me. I'm the youngest. So you spend all your time trying to impress your older sister. You spend all your time trying to prove something to your parents, even when they're already proud of you, you know, it's, really confusing. You don't know where you fit in. I'm like, I live with my sister. I don't live with my parents, but you know, I still want the same support that I got when I lived with them, but I can't just go up to their room anytime I'm having a bad day. They don't know what's going on with me all the time. When we're working together and on a shoot, you know, I, I hate to say this, but sometimes they want more stuff of me or whatever it is, or we want this uh, for the family and then they'll, you know, expect extra from me. And it's like, well, where do I fit in? Because I'm the youngest, but sometimes they want the most. And well, you know, it gets to the point where it's like, well, they, they're, they're not there for me. And it's like, well, you know what? Everyone's doing their own stuff. Like everyone has their own stuff going on. Dixie has music. My mom's modeling. My dad's doing business stuff. Like, There's so much going on for all of us at the same time. It can get hard to celebrate every single achievement when there's just four of us all doing different things all at the same time, running from place to place, traveling, you know, we're still figuring that out now. I think while filming season three, our entire family was going through a lot, like mentally and with work. So it's hard to watch back those episodes because we were just all in such a different place and so confused at where we all stand and taking it out on each other, which I think is probably the biggest regret I have through all of this with my family is like, we need to have each other's backs through everything. Cause you know, through it all, you work with people, you make friends, whatever you have to have family or people that you've kind of adopted as family that are there to support you when there's no cameras or when there's no likes or followers, anything like you need that. And the hardest time for all of us was when we didn't have each other to lean on. And that is really, really shown in season three. And like, even when I see clips, I'm like, I don't want to see it at all. Like that was such a hard time for all of us. And it's so embarrassing at times to see that like people posting it reposting it edits of it edits of times where I was like really 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 struggling and hearing people she's so dramatic but you hear a tenth of what was actually going on you know so it's it's a lot or things are you know maybe I was upset about one thing but in the show it looks like I'm upset about something else it's like a whole bunch of stuff that's just I don't even want to pay attention to it it must be so challenging. Like I've always, I've always thought about it. Like having a show where every one of your feelings and emotions is being documented and then broadcast sounds like the most challenging thing ever. It's a lot. But yeah. It's like, even just that as a premise, and I know it's been around forever and, you know, families have been followed forever and there's th- th- this format has been around forever, but I'm like, it doesn't get easier because of that, because 
as humans, we love to watch drama. We love to watch the gossip. We want to see the scoop. The show has like twists and changes and, you know, characters that are upset at each other. And you have all of this going on, but then behind all of that, there's a real human with real emotions yeah. trying to figure it all out. Have you been able to separate like yourself and then the character on the show too? Like, do you feel, or do you feel that's just so in, interrelated that you're like? In ways, yes, for sure. But like people don't realize when you're filming, sometimes you forget you have a mic on and you say something and you're like, it really wasn't that deep. Like, yeah, it's not that important. Sometimes you're really, really upset or you're maybe mentally struggling a little bit and you don't have a reason because sometimes you don't need a reason. Sometimes you just feel really bad and that happens. So you go through these, well, why are you? Well, what was happening? You know, was it this person's fault? And it's like, well, I don't know. I was just really feeling bad and I didn't have a handle on it and I had to film. So, you know, it's like, I don't get a choice of how I, how I go into filming, you know, I can try and go in with a positive mindset, but after a couple hours, you know, like I'm tired and you see how maybe I was really feeling that day. Maybe it's nothing that was at all in the show. Like people watching have no idea, but it is so many real emotions that it's really, really hard to separate the two. But hopefully, you know, if another season happens, I'll yeah. be able to do that. And why did you feel though in season three that it got harder with family than easier? Like you'd hope that season three like made it yeah. easier, but why do you think it got harder? Is it just that everyone's more busy now or? Yeah, I think we were just all going through so much individually and constantly taking it out on each other. And, you know, that's building blocks to working with your family. No family that works together is perfect all the time. And if you say you are, you are so wrong, especially when, you know, we talk about it all the time, like family is everything. But when you're in those moments where you're like, I'm pissed at this person in my family because of maybe it's something stupid, but to me, it's like, it feels like a lot. It feels like the entire world on my shoulders for maybe something that isn't that big of a deal, but it feels like that to me, you know, it's just, we were all going through so much at the same time mm -hmm. that there was no way that these cameras weren't going to catch it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like even, even though obviously you said that, you know, when you're a kid, you still want your family to take care of you. And obviously now you're in a position where obviously you take care of yourself. You, you live with your sister, but what would you say has been the biggest skills you've learned in how to take care of yourself when you don't have your family to rely on? I don't even know. I feel like that's something that is so confusing to me still. I feel so independent because, you know, I'm traveling without any of my friends or family. I'm on these big work calls. Like, I have no training for this. Mm. I I didn't even finish high school. Like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know if I'm making the right decision. I don't know if this is, you know good or bad, I still call my dad all the time. And I'm like, okay, but seriously, what do you think about this? Because I, like, this sounds not that cool to me, but apparently it's really, like, I have no idea how this works. And, you know, the more I do it, the more I get comfortable and learn. But I missed so much of the normal growing up, going to college and then coming back for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever it is, that I kind of had to like race to figure it out because it was one day you're a kid and you're in high school and you have no responsibilities. And now you have people that are working for you and, and you're responsible for them and you're responsible for everything that you do and you're not allowed to mess up. But I'm 16. I don't know how to not mess up. I don't know anything. Like, how am I supposed to learn that without having these real life experiences? So I think the more as time goes on and the more I'm put in these situations where I have to be independent and a grown up, you know, the easier it gets, but yeah. it's still something that I really have to figure out in each individual situation. Yeah. I'm 36 and I still don't know how not to mess up. <laughs> it's just because I think what we don't realize is 
you've got yourself and your identity, mm -hmm. like you as an individual, which is always changing. Yeah. So whether you're 36 or whether you're 19, you're still dealing with that. On top of that, you've now got the industry is always changing. Mm -hmm. So like the platforms are changing and the business is changing and the social, whatever, all of that's always changing. So you've never done it before. And most people have never done it before. Yeah. So no matter how smart someone was five months ago, everything's changed. Mm -hmm. And so everything's being updated. And then on top of all of that, you've got everyone around you who's constantly changing and growing and evolving. And so it's so hard to ever feel you ever have a handle on on all areas of your life. Yeah. And so definitely as a 16-year-old, now a 19-year-old, like it's it's so much to learn quickly. And I think you had your, you recently had your prom or you did your prom here, right? Like you- Yeah, had I, had, I had two. We did one on the show. Yeah. And then I went to my high school prom back, back. in my hometown. Okay, cool. Yeah, which yeah. was really fun. And like the bit of senior year that I got to have, which was really nice because I didn't get that at all. And a lot of kids didn't during COVID and everything. So I'm definitely not the only person feeling like this. A lot of freshmen, sophomore year of college, like people didn't get that. People didn't get that very, very integral part of growing up or whether it's your first job. Like this was my first job. I had never had any true responsibility before. And I don't know how, and there's no rule book to say, well, this is how you be an adult. So it's kind of just figuring it out and messing up along the way. But when you mess up and you have so many people telling you how you messed up and how that's horrible and you're doing all of these things wrong, you're like, yeah, I know, but this is all I know how to do. You kind of just every day learn a little bit and just continue to do your best because that's all you can do. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, do you know what? It's interesting because we're hearing that from you and I think everyone who's listening right now is going, that's me too. Like, <laughs> you know, I think it doesn't matter how old you are or how wise you are or how smart or whether you have your own business or you don't. or yeah. whether We're just all feeling that way because everyone is just trying to do their best. And sometimes their best is not good enough for everyone else, mm -hmm. but that's all they could give. And I feel that for anyone and everyone today. And so I think what you're saying resonates or feels very relatable, at least even to me. And I'm sure everyone who's listening is thinking that as well. Like, I'm just trying. Yeah, just and that's trying. like the normal human experience. Yeah. And I definitely get on myself about it, but everyone's just doing their best. Like my parents are still figuring out who they are. You know, it's ever changing. Like my grandmother, before she passed, started to get a, a handle on all of the social media stuff and like how to watch me. She would watch YouTube videos or like see, see things online, articles. And she would be like, I heard you did this. And I'm like, well, that's not true. That's just like uh. an article, you know? And she's like, no, 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 but I saw it in the press. And I was like, yeah, I know, but it's not it's not true. So we like had to get a handle on that, but she was changing and she was evolving with the times and she didn't know how it worked. And she was, you know, she was, she was a lot older and, and still figuring out who she is and well, how do I do this? And, and I want to watch you, but I have to discover this whole new thing. Like everyone is learning something and she was just doing her best to watch her grandchildren on social media. Like <laughs> it's something that is so cute and something that seems so simple to me. Like, we'll just download TikTok and watch my videos, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but to her, it was like this whole new thing that she has to learn. And I think once you realize that literally everyone is just trying to do their best to get to the next day, like you can be a lot easier on yourself, but also a lot easier on everyone around you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also even just what you said about your grandmother, like learning about how she's reading something that sounds so true. And you're like, no, it didn't happen yeah. that way. And it's funny because I go through similar things with me and my family. So my parents will read an article about me or whatever, and they'll get really upset for me or they'll get offended for me because there's something in it that they don't yeah. like or whatever it is. Or there's something said about the family, which you must have to deal with way more than I do because your family's in the spotlight too. But then they're like, oh, well, why did they say that about the family and this or that? And I'm like, I didn't say anything like, you know, it's almost like I didn't even talk about that. I didn't mention anything. It's just someone coming up with something. Yeah. And I can't imagine for you, like. It's like the clickbait articles where yeah. I'm like, I'm telling you that this isn't 
real or she'd like see someone online and she's like I don't like them and I'm, why they said something about you three years ago well they're my friends now yeah she's like I don't know I don't like them it's like <laughs> all right <laughs> like, you, you're gonna think whatever you think like that's fine and she was so cute and so so yeah. supportive like she spent all day on her iPad just watching YouTube oh. compilations of my TikToks and every time I see her she'd be like you need to stop cursing on the internet and I was like I know <laughs> I know <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, and and you, nice of you not to block her from those videos. Either. Oh yeah, even I know um, so many people that do my that. My other grandma, she like still swipes up on all my stories. She's like, "You look great," or she'd like reply to fan pages. Like a lot of people's grandparents, I hear this all the time from all the social media kids. It's like my grandma responds to my fan pages thinking they're me, and I'm like, but it's so <laughs> like it's so sweet, That's amazing, and I yeah. love it. And yeah. I mean, sh my grandma. That's my grandma on my dad's side. Like, yeah. she, like, she still texts me all the time, oh. like, do you look so good in this? Or this is so cool. Or anytime I do anything where it's, like, something that she would like, I'll, like, send her a photo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's just proud. You know, that's also yeah. a good person to talk to that's just, like, always going to be proud of me, which yeah. is really nice to have. Yeah, definitely. And to allow that in. Mm -hmm. Do you find that... You found like, I know you're close with Markel, mm -hmm. who, who I love too. Yeah. He's such a, I, I love Markel's energy. I've only met him a couple of times, but he's so awesome. Have you found that you've got a good group of friends around you in the industry? Because what I've found is that, so I have a bunch of great friends back in London who are like my best friends, like my best man at my wedding mm -hmm. and like my closest friends that I grew up with. And I speak to them like, I speak to my best friend like three times a week still because it's so important to me yeah. and, it, and I need it. And at the same time, I also need friends who are in the industry because there are certain things that we can all understand about the industry, kind of like the idea of, yeah, don't trust the press on that and whatever, mm -hmm. because they already know that because yeah. they go through the same stuff. Do you find, I know, it sounds like you have a great group of friends back at home. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you've also found the good friends in the industry that you can kind of compare notes with a bit too and be like, oh, I just went through that and this is how I'm feeling? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Markel's like, He's family to me. Yeah, he being friends. Yeah. Has shown so much to me just as a person, whether it's talking to me one on one or defending me online or, you know, defending me to the people around him. Like he is someone that every person that meets him has so much amazing things to say about him. And I'm so thankful that I have him in my life. Whether it's like, we're doing nothing or we're out with a bunch of people and I we want to have a dance party in the middle of the dance floor and it's just us two, like we'll do it. Or in the middle of a restaurant, whatever it is, like I love that. But I've definitely found a lot of people that are in the industry and a lot of the friendships that I have, I tend to keep quiet about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the friendships that I have, I've met them in very, very weird ways because how am I supposed to meet people? You know, I don't go out super often. I don't, I'm not usually around people my own age. Like a lot of my friends that I met, they were actually dancers at the Kids Choice Awards <laughs> and we just clicked and I started to hang out with them and I really liked them and they're really cool people and they're in an industry that I'm so fascinated by. And yeah, they do so much similar things to me, but it's also different. And I think that that's really special. And after meeting them, it was really refreshing to be around people my own age and also just have people that are hardworking and determined and not competitive with me at all and just happy to see me happy and mm -hmm. I can have fun with whether we're filming or not you know but even like my boyfriend he's in the industry and you know we we tend to handle things a little bit differently but sometimes I I have to be like it's not worth it you know we don't have to respond we don't have to do anything like it's not worth it I know you, you know me, whether people are saying things about me or people are saying things about our relationship, you know, having each other to kind of navigate that on our own is is really nice mm -hmm. because it's also what two 19-year-olds in a relationship have their lives together, you know? There's ups and downs, like whether 
I'm working all the time or he's working all the time or I'm traveling or whatever it is. Like there's always so much going on that can so easily put a strain on a relationship and also just coming into adulthood with two teenagers that have no idea what they're doing and just trying their best. Like, you know, it's, been really confusing to navigate, but also really refreshing to have someone else there that's like just trying to figure it out day by day. Mm -hmm. It's almost, yeah, it's almost easier in one sense because you have someone to bounce it off of yeah. as opposed to- You're like, am you're I crazy? Are you crazy? <laughs> is this like, is this okay? You know? Yeah. So it's it's really nice. Do you, do you think the hardest part about success and fame is having a relationship in the public eye, would you say that that's the hardest part in terms of when it comes to your relationships or that's not? Sometimes I feel like, you know, when two people that are in a relationship have like an off week or whatever, there can be the whole, this person didn't like their photo or they haven't posted together, they're broken up or this person's starting a rumor. Like even if you, you two are struggling, that's for you to go through and handle it however is appropriate, whether you guys part ways or continue to work through things together. Like no relationship is perfect ever. Mm -hmm. You have moments where so much is going on. Like during Dancing with the Stars, I was dancing seven days a week. I was never home. He was like, I felt like I didn't have a girlfriend. And that was really hard. It was hard on my parents, you know, like it's a lot. And especially for two young teenagers to go through, like, we don't, we don't know how to do this. No one knows how to do this. Mm -hmm. So we're just doing our best and there's ups and downs, but we work through it. And that's just being a person, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and, and just the idea of, it is interesting when you've got two people who have crazy lives and, and have different journeys and have different you know, commitments and family commitments. And there's just so much going on yeah. to keep up with it all. What have you found? What has helped you both kind of keep up with each other's schedules and each other's lives? Because that's not going to change, yeah. at least not right now. And so how, what, what has helped? What has worked? I think, you know, we've obviously talked about this so much just as a whole. I was, I was just gone for almost two weeks and we were on different time zones just trying to text and update each other, but it, it's figuring out what each other needs. Mm -hmm. You know, if he wants me to keep him updated, then I'll keep him updated because that's what he needs. If he, if I need him to tell me what's going on in his week so I don't feel left out, like that's totally cool. That's what I need. It's just having that conversation and realizing that people's needs change and adapting with that and not feeling like, well, I don't want to make him upset. Like he's working a lot and I know he's super busy. Like I need a shoulder to lean on. It's also having the conversation. Like sometimes I'll literally say, I'm really, really sensitive right now. Like I just need some extra support. Mm -hmm. And then he knows to, well, she needs this right now. Okay. Like that's totally cool. That's two people in a relationship doing whatever they can to make the other person happy. Mm -hmm. Just normal human things. And definitely not worrying about what anyone online has to say. It's so not worth it. Yeah. It really isn't because 99% of these people are looking for you to respond. Mm -hmm. Like even today, I woke up to some crazy person talking about me in like the most wildly disrespectful ways like I've really seen in a long time. And the thing is like me and this person were at an event together and this person introduced themselves. I introduced myself. We tried to be nice. This kid was not nice to me and then went and talked very poorly on me. And Landon's like, well, let me call this kid. And I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, it's not. That's what he's looking for. Is it taking everything in me not to respond or not to text him? Yeah. But I know if I text him, he's going to post it and that's going to be a thing. And he's going to get exactly what he wants me to respond and give in to whatever story he wants to portray to the people that watch him. It's not, it's not my problem. Mm. Like I know who I am and that's good enough for me. Mm. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's so hard to get to that point, mm -hmm. but it's so liberating when you do, yeah. like it's so freeing when you realize that where 
you're like actually not responding is not getting caught up in someone else's yeah. thing. Yeah. And like, then it just gives people an opportunity to, well, if I say this about her, then she's going to respond. And yeah. it's like, I, I don't have time to respond to every little thing that yeah, people yeah. have to say about me. Yeah. And it, it takes so much. It's so draining to, yeah. to, have to see that and the more you talk about it the more your fans talk about it and people in the press talk about it and it's like for what reason mm -hmm. because i was angry at this kid who i met once like who cares yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, and it's hard when the person who you're in a relationship with wants to defend you too yeah. and like and he's so sweet yeah. he is so quick to defend me in every way possible and i just have to be like it's cool. Like it's good. <laughs> I feel like I tell him that all the time because he gets so upset whenever people have something negative to say about me or his family. And I mean, I think I definitely told him like many, many times, it's cool. Like it's, it's totally fine. They're going to say it no matter what. And even if you respond and are like, well, this isn't true because this is this, they're not, they're, they already read it and they think yeah. what they think about you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to change their minds, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're arguing with people that don't care what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already lost. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's a lose-lose situation. Yeah. So moving on is the best thing you can do. Yeah, <laughs> no, and, it, and it's wonderful to be with someone and have that with someone who you know cares about you that deeply. Like my wife's like that. Like my wife gets very defensive about me and like can get really activated and she gets really upset for me and whatever it may be. And I... I really always appreciate that because I can see that she knows who I am. And that's yeah. kind of what it goes back to where I'll always say the same thing to her. I'm like, I'm just glad I have someone who knows who I am. Especially like when someone cares about you like that to see you upset because of something and not being able to fix the problem because they just want to see you happy. Yeah. Like I understand how upset that might make you, you yeah. know? And I... I feel bad because sometimes I feel like I drag him into the drama just because of the relationship. But I think knowing that, you know, we have each other mm -hmm. and I can tell him like, this was, this actually really hurt my feelings today. <laughs> and and it was, it was a lot. And I just need some comfort and I need you to be by my side. And that's good enough for me, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Charlie, what are you excited about right now? Like what's kind of like, you know, you've done Ooh. so many amazing things. And I feel like this journey that you're saying with your identity of like getting to know yourself better. Yeah. You've done so many things. And I'm guessing some of them you're like, oh yeah, that was Charlie D'Amelio. And then <laughs> this is Charlie. It's like, what is Charlie like really excited about or curious about or passionate about? Or like what's coming up where you're like, oh, I really want to try that out or learn that or whatever, whatever it may be, like open floor. Um, okay. I think... First thing that I'm most excited about is my dogs. I have a puppy. <laughs> um, I know I sound so lame. No, you're I have not, a puppy. Not lame. I'm, I'm not laughing because I think it's lame. I love it because it's cute. It's just like, yeah. you're going to have to open up a dog shelter or something. I know. I'm like in love with her. Uh, I have my like older dog who's nine. She's literally me as a dog and I'm, I'm obsessed with her. She's the most adorable dog ever. She's a literal human. But then I have this puppy that Lana and I adopted from Nashville and she's like she was abandoned and she was like it was a horrible story and it really like pulled at my heartstrings and I was like okay I need to take you home now like I will take care of you I love you and like watching her grow up and being responsible for her I think has been very refreshing to me because my older dog she's you know, she's very self-sufficient. She's also very lazy. So I'll be up in the morning and she'll wake up two hours later ready to be fed. Like she is not, she has her own schedule. And I love that about her because that's how I raise her. She's a very like laid back dog, I can have all the lights on and she's sleeping. Like I love that. But this puppy, you know, you have to train her. You have to, it's very specific. And these formative puppy years are so important to who this dog becomes. There's no bad dogs. There's only bad dog owners. <laughs> so I just like am loving this journey of truly, because, you know, I got my dog nine years ago. I was 10. Yeah. I wasn't actually raising her. And now I'm getting the chance to raise a dog. And it's really, really exciting and special. And seeing the two of them together is like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> I think something else that I'm excited for is... I have a dance room in my garage, so I love just going down there any time of the day, whether it's 4 in the morning or 1 p.m., and just, like, 
letting go and being open with myself and using movement as therapy and also getting a little bit of a workout in, you know, like being productive. I love that. And probably experimenting more with my style. That's Mm -hmm. something that I've just recently started to get into. I think Landon and my sister had a lot to do with that because I I love the way that they put together outfits. I think that they both have really good styles and it comes very natural to them. And to me, it's a lot harder because I always go for what I know instead of stepping out of the box. But I'm trying. So that's (laughs) something exciting and it's fun to experiment, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love different. how personal all those were. Those were great. They were great choices. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love how none of them were career li- career <laughs> related and like none of them were work related. And that's yeah. awesome because I can tell that you've you've really started carving those two things as separate. Yeah. Um, work-wise, you know, using my voice more online. I think that, you know, even doing a podcast is something very outside of my comfort zone. A lot of my career has been not talking. Mm. So it's been very hard for me to get into using my voice and figuring out what do I want to say, especially when you don't know yourself. How do you answer questions? I don't, you can't just say, I don't know for everything. (laughs) So that's something that's been special. And I've been trying to make more content for my fans and trying to use my voice more and like even little things finishing a get ready with me which I film 50 of them and I post one of them like trying to get more into it and go back to the reason why I started social media because I like it and I'm finally at a point where I like it again which is really refreshing and nice it doesn't feel like work Mm -hmm. I love that and what's been what is that when you say you want to use your voice and even doing the podcast today like you coming on today and, you know, being open and, and trusting me and trusting this space and just being vulnerable with the idea of, like you said, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out who I am yeah, and, and being okay with that, which I think by the way, for a 19 year old is, is completely normal and wonderful and good. And like, I think that's amazing that you want to spend this time in your life figuring out who you are. I think it's the best investment you could ever make. I'm so happy that you're doing it. And I'm hoping that you take your whole audience and community on a journey to do it for themselves because you're going to save so many people from so many stressful 20 to 30 year old journeys, right? Like literally like you can either do it now or you can do it when you're 30. And if you do it now, it's like, you're going to help so many people. What is, is that kind of like, when you say using your voice, is that the type of journey you want people to go on with you? Or are you, are you still figuring out what that journey it is that you want people to go on with you? Yeah. As of right now, it's literally just talking, Mm. talking online, just actually using my voice. You know, for so long, it was a song and no words. Like it sounds so little, but just talking. I feel like that's something that is, which is so weird, but it's so outside of my comfort zone. And I feel so like weird doing it, but has honestly been really refreshing for me because, you know, I'm growing up and a part of growing up is being confident with what you have to say and using your words and just talking with, you know, a little bit of purpose. And I'm growing up, but also so are all of the people that are watching me. And I think bringing them on that journey of this is literally just what I'm doing. I'm not talking about anything that's really of any importance sometimes. Sometimes I'm just talking, but (laughs) that's what I need to do to move to this next step of my life, to hopefully talk about something important and talk about what matters to me. I think that that's, this is a very integral step of growing up. I think that's really smart. I genuinely do. I think that takes a lot of courage to even say that. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like insignificant at all. I think it, it makes a lot of sense to me that in order for you to stand for something, you need to get to a point where you just feel comfortable being open and sharing. Yeah, and so much of the beginning few years of this journey, every time I talked, someone had something to say. And, you know, you get canceled every five seconds. Like, that was what was happening to me for so long anytime I opened my mouth. So I just stopped talking. I stopped saying anything that was important to me. I stopped doing anything that was outside of the box that I was put in where 
I couldn't go wrong if I just didn't do anything, mm. you know? Yeah. And I have opinions. I have thoughts. I have things I like. I have things I don't like. Why can't I just say it? Like, who is stopping me? The people that actually care what I have to say, they're going to support me even if they disagree, you know? Whether it's I really like this outfit and they don't, like, that's cool. They respect my opinion. I respect theirs. That's awesome. The people that don't like me, they're not going to like me no matter what. They didn't like me when I wasn't saying anything. They're not going to like me now. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not making my videos for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. When when you say you still want to get to know who you are and your identity, what are the parts that you're like, I'm still just trying to figure this out or this part I'm like really curious about. I'm trying to learn about this about myself, but I don't yeah. know what it is. Like, what are those parts of yourself? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the way that I present myself, whether it's how do I like my makeup done? How do I like to dress? How do I like to look? How do I like to show myself to other people? Not just what is going on at the moment. How do I like to smell? You know, I like Born Dreamer. I know I like that. And let's discover for future with Born Dreamer, what else do I like? You know, whatever I know I like, go a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And you know, something so simple. I've been doing more colors with my nails, which is so random and so small. It's your nails, you know, people get their nails done all the time, but I did bright green. And I thought about that for three weeks before I did it. And like, why? I enjoyed it. I liked the color. I wanted it on my nails. It made me happy. Every time I saw them, I was like, I did that. That was something different. I normally do nude. Let's do something fun. Like that little thing mm -hmm. was so much fun for me and it brought me so much happiness and I would match this color to this and yeah. it's just so fun. Yeah, yeah. Why am I robbing myself of fun because I don't want to put myself out there? Mm. Yeah, good for you. I, I honestly like you're literally doing all the practical steps that it takes to build your values. Like, yeah. And that's what it is. All of these little habits for anyone who's listening, all these little habits and these little changes that you're making, they turn into values that you appreciate about mm -hmm. yourself. So a value could be, and I'm not putting a value on you, I'm just throwing it out there as for a reflection, but a value could be, I like freedom or I like self-expression or I like uh, random can be a value yeah. or whatever it may be. And like, and then those values become things you can use in the future for how you make decisions. Yeah. Now, when you make, so one of my values has always been to take risks. I feel like I took risks ever since I was 14, 18, 21, and I've noticed that pattern in my life. And so now when I'm taking a risk, I'm not that scared anymore yeah. because I've always taken risks my whole life. And I love how when I first took a risk, I didn't even know what a risk was. Like when I was 14 years old or 18, yeah. I just did it. And now when I look back, I'm like, oh no, that's a skill I have now. And so it's almost like when you're doing all these things, you're just collecting lots of different like skills. Yeah. And then one day they'll evolve into values, which will form an identity. And then you'll be able to be like, these are the three things that I value and that really matter to me. And, you know, I love that you, I love how simple you've made it for yourself. And I love how you've broken it down because I think a lot of us try to like, leapfrog to like this is who I am now and we almost want the the performance part before the work part and it's like I feel like you're doing the work part yeah and it's it's great to watch it's really great to see thank you Charlie what have I not asked you about that you're like I really want to share this so this has been on my heart on my mind or like something you want to talk about that you're like this is what I want to use my voice for and that you haven't asked me about it or it just didn't come up something for me that I think is very interesting which is very random and has nothing to do with my career my personal life or anything i love the san diego safari park which is so random but i've recently found i watched this like whole video on it this like very specific thing that you have to go through a lot of steps to be able to get it for like a zoo or aquarium or anything but it's a certificate that shows if it's humane to the animals and learning about that has been really interesting because I love going there and I love how free the animals are and how it's just like they are in the wild and how they help the animals. And that's definitely something that I want to get more into is like figuring out exactly what it is and going to more places like that and, you know, not appreciating places like SeaWorld that treat their animals horribly, you know, like little things like that, that I think is so interesting because I love animals. Mm. So that was something I, I need to find the name of exactly what that little like thing is but it's really cool and like 
to get that. You have to go through a lot of work and every place is constantly trying to outdo each other. So the bar is constantly <laughs> being raised, wow. which I think is so interesting. It's the quality of how they treat the animals yeah. there. And they have to pass a certain number of, right, 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 wow. Yeah, so that's really cool and yeah. something random that I discovered. No, I love that, yeah. <laughs> my, my wife's a big fan of uh, visiting animals as much as we can. And so she's she's kind of always led that. And we've gone to some of the randomest places in, in LA because of her, but her relationship with animals is really beautiful and she can like, you know, start a relationship with. I love you that. Know, yeah, and it's really special to watch. And it's really interesting because we went to a couple last year and, she'd always come back really like even more calm and even more just still. And, and I, and it was really beautiful to see just how when you're connected to nature and we are nature and, you know, we're a part of that, but now we feel so disconnected from yeah. it. Yeah. But animals are such a great way of reconnecting. What, what do you find, I guess, fulfilling or meaningful about being obviously your dogs, but with these animals, like what is it about it for you specifically that you appreciate about it? I think it's just so peaceful and to learn so much. Like when you go to these places, I will come back only talking about animal facts for like a month <laughs> and I love it. And sometimes people are like, that's like, wh where did you even come up with that? But I think it's so cool and so interesting to see all these animals in with each other and and how they respond to things and I love places where it's like if they're out and you see them that's great if not they don't feel like being out <laughs> that's just how it is I just think it's so interesting yeah, yeah. and I literally I've been to the San Diego safari twice and the first time talked about animal facts for like two months the second time I leading up to going that was all I could talk about and I brought I got so many other people excited about it because it was like, but you don't understand how cool it is. Like you are 20 feet away from a cheetah with like, there's no big fence up, you yeah. know, like it's crazy just to see these animals just living, not yeah. worried about anything that is so materialistic or anything like that. Like, I don't know. I just find so much joy in it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you been to anywhere in Africa before? I haven't, and okay. I really want to go. Yeah. I've like, I've seen so many videos and so many of my friends have gone, and it just seems so cool. Yeah, I, I, I've talked about this before on the podcast, but I'm sharing it because it's natural in our conversation. I went to Rwanda last year. Wow. And Rwanda reveres gorillas. So literally every time there's a new gorilla in Rwanda, the, the community comes together and they name it and they have this whole <gasps> ceremony so for cool. it. And so they've had these uh, gorilla sanctuaries for years. And so same as what you're saying, there's no fences or walls or whatever. It's basically the mountains and you take treks into the mountains and you discover gorilla in their natural yeah. habitat. And there's families. So we followed, We I went three days and one of the days we discovered a family that had like 20 gorillas in it. Then we discovered another one and you get to see the babies and the yeah. adults. And it was easily one of my favorite things I've done in my entire life. And it was just the most magical experience because you're truly in nature. The animals are in their habitat. So you're going into their home. Yeah. And they're going to, they're so respectful and let you do your thing. And at the same time, you get to learn about them in this really intimate way it was beautiful to just see how they took care of the kids, how the kids played around, how they were defensive if we got too close, yeah. like just everything about them. And the guides that we had said that you can also go and walk. So this was walking with gorillas, but they said you could go walk with elephants too. That's cool. And me and my wife have been talking about doing that. We're like, I'd love to go walk with elephants. Like how cool would that be? And yeah. so there's all these incredible experiences out there. And, you know, whether it's a local safari or, or whether it's being able to go there yeah. and have this experience, I, I definitely feel... And my other team, someone on my team has been talking about going to see the Great Migration, which is what, so the easy version of it, I'm giving a very bad <laughs> explanation, but just to make it relatable for everyone, it's basically what happens in The Lion King when all the wildebeest that's are like so running cool. across. Like, so that's the Great Migration where they're like stampeding across the stampede where wow. Mufasa unfortunately dies. Like that moment is what the Great Migration is and it happens every single year. That's so and cool. So yeah, anyway, I'm I'm getting carried away too, but I, <laughs> No, I yeah. mean it's so easy to. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, and it's magical to think that these things exist and you can go and witness them or even watch them online or on yeah. a documentary whatever, you know. Well, at the San Diego Safari, they're literally like 
with the southern white rhinos and the northern white rhinos, it's like one of, one of them is going extinct and they're literally figuring out through stem cells like how to bring it, it back. It's so, so wild and so interesting. And hearing these people talk about it and and all of the steps they're going through with scientists and zoologists and literally everyone to help, you know, bring back this species of rhinos. It's like, this is so cool <laughs> and has nothing to do with anything that I do in my normal everyday life. But how interesting is that to yeah. just hear and, and see and like, what? That's crazy. But yeah. I don't know. I just think that that's <laughs> so cool. I love it. I love it. And I hope you just keep pursuing and following all of these things that you think are cool and you know you're you, it's not that you don't know yourself I wouldn't say that you don't know who you are I just say that you're you're firmly on that path yeah like you're on that path of self-discovery and you're doing it at a perfect time in your life and you're taking every one of the right steps like you know it's not that you don't know who you are or you're confused you're just you're just taking those steps and and all of it's going to become more and more clear as you continue to take more steps so yeah thank you for sharing the this part of the journey with me because i'm hoping that in a few years time you'll come yeah. back and then you'll be like jay i figured this out like these are this. all of my favorite yeah. things yeah. that i've decided yeah yeah and i and i hope and i hope they'll change again and you know i but i i'm glad that you came and shared this part because this is the hardest part to share when you're not sure and you're figuring it out and i'm glad that we had the opportunity to capture that today. Yeah. And I'm really, really appreciate you sharing that with people because Thank it you. is the hardest part to share when you're like, I don't know. I'm not quite there, but yeah. this is where I am now. Yeah. Perfect. Charlie, thank you so much. No, thank uh, you. For coming on the show today. And we end every episode with a final five. And these, I'm going to totally ruin these because I enjoy doing that. But you're meant to answer them in one word to one sentence maximum. But... I will probably ask you to expand because they always lead to more thoughtful answers. So, all right, Charlie, these are your final five. The first question is, what is the best advice you've ever heard or received or even given to someone? This is probably the only thing that keeps me sane. Whether it's good or bad, everything happens for a reason. You can't control it. Mm. And that's something you hold on to, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, makes me feel like I'm not going crazy. When have you used that the most? You can expand Ooh. beyond one sentence. I mean, when I feel like I have no idea what to do next or I feel like everything's coming crashing down, this is important because it's helping me get to the next step of my life. And as much as this sucks right now, I need it. And some of the worst parts where I, I feel like I'm at an all-time low that helped me get to that next step. So next time I'm I'm feeling like that, I know how to I know first I can get myself out of it and second that you know, maybe it's not that big of a deal and in a year I'm not even going to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Love that. All right, second question. What's the worst advice you've ever heard or received? Probably that I need to say yes to everything because you don't know when this is going to end. Mm. Sometimes you just need to say no and take that time for yourself. I'm so glad you brought that up. So many young creators hear that. They just overwhelm themselves and it's, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Like give yourself time to figure out who you are. Mm. And I think you're so right. Like I've, I've said this to a lot of people too, that it will only end when you want it to. Like nothing can end. If you're, if you're alive and you're creating and you're yeah. building, like things just don't end. And I think we use the end as a scarcity tactic or a fear tactic to get more out of someone mm -hmm. or to get the most out of it right now, not realizing that someone could take a break for three years if that's what they wanted to do and come back even stronger and bigger and better and whatever. Yeah. And I just don't think we allow people to have that space. And I think it's really unhealthy for anyone to think that, oh, if I'm not, don't do this, I'm going to be irrelevant or whatever. It's like, actually, if you're an artist, you could take time out and come back in years from now and create a masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, the first like three years of my career, all anyone was saying was, it could be over like that. No one's going to care about you. And I spent so much time. When is it going to end? Everyone keeps telling me it's going to end. Like, do I want it to end? Maybe I want it to end. Maybe I want a break and it just to all be over and go back to my normal life. I've taken breaks. I've taken step backs. I've done everything that was coming to me at the moment. And it's like, 
letting whether the people that are watching you are going to stay or leave dictate every move you make. Those people that really care about you, they're not just going to leave if you stop posting for a month or a week or however long. Like, put your own mental state first. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't put your mental state first, then it's definitely going to go away. Yeah. You're going to get burnt out and then no one's going to care because you don't care. Exactly. Or you're not going to be able to put anything yeah. out. Like, you know, and if you look at it that perspective, it's like, yeah, you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. You lose yourself and then you have nothing to share. And then you've definitely, you know, lost out. No, really, really great answer. I love that. Uh, question number three, what is the craziest rumors you've heard about yourself? One that made you laugh and one that made you cry. Ones that make me laugh are probably the ones where I'll like, I'll seem super, I'll see like blind items about myself. And it's like, she did this crazy thing at this party and it was wild. And, and I was like, didn't even go to a party. That's so like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like where did you guys yeah, come up with this? There. I wasn't yeah, even there. Yeah. Um, so I, those ones always make me laugh when they're like so not true. Yeah, yeah. I just have to be like, okay, yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I, it's funny you said about not being at the party. Like, so I, I officiated uh, Ben and Jen's wedding last year, mm -hmm. and there was a guest list that was printed, and the guest list just had everyone's name on it. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like asking me like, oh, did you see this person? Did you see this person? I was like, they weren't there. Yeah. Like it was a really private <laughs> wedding. Yeah. But it's like everyone assumes that all these people were there. And now that all these magazines have printed it, everyone assumes that it was just this big celebrity wedding. And it's like, well, it wasn't. Yeah. It was, it was just a really intimate friends and family wedding. Just makes beautiful. you laugh. Like, yeah. It's just you like, guys it's, pulled this out of nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> like it was just crazy to me. I was like, how do you make this up? Like, you know, and so there was no official guest list printed externally. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, yeah. And then one that kind of like got to you or if there was one that like made you more emotional or things that make you more emotional Ooh. in general. Like. Things that make me more emotional are definitely ones that try to display my character in a way where you know I I don't want to defend everything that I do I don't want to defend every rumor that comes out about me but it's like to think that people think I'm capable of doing these things that you know are sometimes so horrible or you know they're especially when I was like 16 16 was really hard for me and I would hear these grown adults every single day. Charlie did this. Charlie did that. Charlie did this. I literally, it was actually right when I hit 100 million. I think I was at the lowest mental state possible. And I looked so happy online. And it got to the point where I was, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I physically cannot do this. Like, it got really dark to where I was like, I don't even want to be here anymore. And I think back to those times and the grown adults that put 16-year-old me in that mindset. And I'm just like, like, you guys have kids now. Like, you guys are, are grown. And first of all, never got an apology through a direct message. Never got an apology or anything besides if it was for other people or that they want something from me. And I just like, I wish that they could see what they did to me and how truly horrible they treated me. And like, what if that was your kid? What if, what if that was you? How would you feel? And like, I'm so proud of myself for getting myself through that. Cause that really like, depending on how I responded to that could have changed the trajectory of my life, whether I started to cope in unhealthy ways or or harmed myself or did something that you know would m make these people feel bad like i'm just very glad that i have the people around me and also got to give some credit to myself was able to get out of that mm -hmm. i can't i mean even just hearing you talk about it like it feels so hard and heavy yeah. and like I can feel how intense it could have been. Like, what got you through that? Like, what was it that, because at 16, I mean, you don't have a lot to pull on. Like, what gets you through all of that? Especially being around, you know, 
now your family's more used to it. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a bit more, yeah. it doesn't make it easier. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying it makes it easier, but people are more aware of it. Yeah, for sure. But at that time, it's like right at the beginning. You know, it was really hard for a long time. And especially at that point, I showed myself in a very specific light and didn't want to let anyone know it was getting to me. And then I would go and, and cry on live. And, and I think back to that and I think it was the people that I had around me. Like it was getting to the point where like people were coming to my house to check on me. Like it was bad. And like, I don't know if these people that did this, like, I think they know who they are, but are ever going to see this? Like, first of all, I think I deserve an apology. <laughs> Second of all, not that I need one because I'm content with how it happened, whatever. But the fact that there's no accountability for those people, but there was so much accountability for a 16 year old, I think is so wild. And there's so like, honestly, the hardest stuff to deal with was the people that were grown adults that were like, just ripping on me every second of every day, like 20 videos, like what I now look back and I'm so disgusted by the fact that these people like thought that that was okay. It's so wild. And I'm just, I'm very thankful that I had my friends and my family and enough in myself to want to get through it and come out the other side and show these people that they can't ruin me. And I have more to show people than what I've done so far. Mm. Mm. That's so powerful. And it's so, <laughs> no, it really is. It's so powerful to hear that. And it's, and it, it breaks my heart hearing it too, because I totally get what you're saying in terms of just like when you have kids, we live in a world that wants to prioritize mental health. Mm -hmm. But then when we take people apart, whether they've made a mistake or not, yeah, we're not mindful of their mental health at all. Yeah. And it's almost like if someone's made a mistake or maybe not even made a mistake, it's almost like, well, now we don't have to treat them as if they have mental health yeah. at all. Or it's like yeah. people loved me because I wasn't perfect and I was authentic. But then anytime I would mix up my words or make a mistake or do anything outside of what was okay for these people, it was like, yeah. well, I hate her and everyone should hate her. And she's a horrible person because of this. And I was like, but what did I do? Like, it was so hard to come to terms to the fact that so many people hated me mm -hmm. and I was just doing my best. I was like, but I, I don't get it. Like, all I do is try to please everyone around me and they're not happy. Like, how do I, how do I do this? I'm never going to win. Mm. And, you know, that's really hard. Like, I give myself so much credit for, for how sure. I handled this stuff. The best way I knew how, like, so wild. If you ever doubt how tough you are, you just got to remember 16-year-old yeah. Charlie. Cause, she was a beast. Yeah, yeah that's so tough. Like, that is really, really intense. Yeah. That is really, really intense. How have you dealt with that feeling of like trying to keep everyone else? I know you've talked about it before, the idea of like trying to keep everyone else afloat and you want to kind of let go of that pressure. Do you feel like you've let go of it or do you feel like you're letting go of it? I think I am in certain aspects, but also leaning into it a little, you mm. know, like maybe not what the internet wants, but what does my family want? What do my friends want? What does my boyfriend want? You know, like those people, what do my true fans want? What do they want me to put out that would make them happy? Because I'm doing it for these people. And maybe if I'm feeling a little bit burnt out right now, I really think back to, well, this is the reason that I started doing it, you know, but also understanding that I have to listen to myself and it's what I balance. need. Yeah. Figuring out that balance, which I don't think I'll ever truly get the hang of because it's always changing, but at least acknowledging it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Question four and five, last two questions. What's something new that you're trying to learn this year or something that a skill that you're trying to develop? I want to get better at packing <laughs> I and, love that. and like traveling. Because you travel so much. Yeah. yeah. And it's such a stressor for me. Literally every single time before I leave for a trip, I will have a little mental breakdown, full like tears, everything. 
it's a that's another control thing and a very obsessive compulsive thing that I do because I like to have my stuff around me I like to have my things I like to have everything that I could possibly need like even in my purse I have everything that I could possibly need for if I go on a three-day vacation like it just causes me so much stress that I would like to be able to take a overnight trip Mm -hmm. and just like pack and go without worrying so much like that would be the dream yeah that's a great that that, I think that's a great skill (laughs) that I wish everyone was taught right definitely there are great packers and there are bad packers yeah and I'm a bad packer for sure and I get that do what my wife does my wife just takes six suitcases she just (laughs) literally my sister (laughs) She will go places, pack like an hour before. She's like, only brought one shoe. Yeah. Like, how how do you do this? This is insane. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. All right, great. Charlie, final question, fifth and final question. If you could, and you can take your time with this, if you could create one rule or one law that everyone in the world had to follow, what would it be? Lead with empathy. Don't be so hard on every single thing every situation everything no matter what like you never ever know what someone's truly going through Mm -hmm. even you can ask me what's wrong and i could tell you one thing and maybe deep down it's something else that i'm embarrassed to tell you about like you just never know the struggle that someone's dealing with when they're by themselves Mm -hmm. so just be a little more empathetic i feel like covid really you know caused people to react fast just take a step back you know hear people out just calm down (laughs) calm down a little bit yeah yeah. it's so needed for ourselves and others and it's amazing how many of us we all know we need that world but it's almost like the system and society and the way it works is set up to make us not be that yeah right like we all want that we all say that and then something happens in the press and then everyone jumps on it and mm-hmm. like it just, and i have to say that to yeah, myself yeah, too yeah. yeah keep yourself in check you know definitely charlie i love how this conversation has been so fun <laughs> and deep yeah and like random and unique and i love that because that's what all of us are right yeah. like i think if you try and have a conversation that's just deep or just cool or just whatever, it doesn't work. But when you just get to know someone 360, it's it's a bit quirky, it's a bit funny, it's it was super thoughtful and insightful. And I'm so glad that it was truly you. I hope you felt that way. Yeah, definitely. This and is refreshing for me. Good. I'm glad. And thank you so much for trusting me and uh, being here. And I'm so grateful. And everyone who's been listening or watching, whether you're walking your dogs, because I know <laughs> you do that, whether you're at the gym, whether you're driving to and from work, or whether you're editing a video right now, I want to say thank you to you for listening. And I hope that you're going to share your highlights of so many great insights, thoughts, just reflections, I think, that Charlie shared with us today. Make sure you share the ones that stood out to you. Tag both me and Charlie as well, whether you're using TikTok, X, or Instagram, because I love seeing what you related to and what you connected to. There were so many parts today I felt when I was listening, I was like, oh, I get that. Like, I hear that. And I want to know what you heard and what you understood and what you learned. Uh, Charlie, thank you so much again. I hope you'll come on many, many more times yes, in the future. Yes, thank you for having me. Seriously, this is really nice to be able to have the space to talk about anything. Well, you're always welcome. Thank you. You're always welcome. Thank you. If you love this episode, you will also love my interview with Kendall Jenner on setting boundaries to increase happiness and healing your inner child. You could be reading something that someone is saying about you and being like, that is so unfair because that's not who I am. Mm. And that really gets to me sometimes. But then looking at myself in the mirror and being like, but I know who I am. Why does anything else matter? 